hello guys uh, welcome back once again to this youtube channel you know um let's talk about it will be praising bola ahmed you know a lot of people don't even know that people be as a matter of fact is not a bitter politician this is one fact that the abado and apg supporters have failed to understand you know they try to paint people be uh, uh, black and you know try to uh, defame him and try to you know call him a bitter person and all that but they don't know that this man as a matter of fact has been holding politicians accountable and he has you know enlightened and put the consciousness in a lot of youths to start holding the government accountable. I can boldly say this for you that without it will be the APC government will continue with their rascality and their illegality. But because of that it will be has uh, actually you know triggered the obedient movement and put the necessary necessary consciousness and enlightenment in the youth. The government now knows that whatever decision they take, whatever thing they do must definitely be scrutinized. And as a matter of fact, it will be has actually you know praised the parliament to uh, uh, government. I can I will show you what he said and how he praised them. Like I said, he's not a better politician. In fact, he's the only opposition that we have in this country. I think Abubakar has actually remained silent. Silent, but soon he will soon go back to Dubai. His spokesperson, uh, Daniel Baula, has left him behind. A lot of PDP members are in APC. That is why we say they are PDAPC. They are the same people. These are people that do what we call transactional politics. What will you give me so that I will change my principle, I will change my uh, dignity, my dignity and my rules and everything. They don't have any dignity, they don't have any principle. But P2B and obedience are the only two opposition we have. People that have a common principle, a common idea, and a very consistent philosophy. The philosophy of you know electing people that are competent, that has competent character and compassion. And not people that will lose money, not people that forfeited four hundred and sixty thousand US dollars because of dog meter activity, not people that actually forged a lot of certificates in order for them to become a, 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 a political office holder. I can boldly tell you this for free. Well, without wasting your time, look at what people did. You know, uh, well, I mentioned it recently, you know, reduced and uh, slashed the cost of governance, uh, especially in his travel system by 60%. Yeah, he reduced the number of persons that will follow him for different travels, both foreign travels, travels, and local travels. You know, it's a commendable uh, policy. And this goes a long way to tell you that we are looking to what Pitobi has been saying. You know, Pitobi has always been of the opinion that governance, the cost of governance must be slashed, that we don't have. Is in it whereby it just is in it is being uh, budgeted uh, a cow of about 150 million is being budgeted for a senator. Meanwhile, the, uh, throughout the lifespan of a professor, he doesn't even earn such amount of money throughout the 30 years of service of a professor. So they are actually listening to all the criticism and everything that P2B is actually saying. In fact, P2B is the one even bringing this country indirectly because he is holding them in, in a very critical position and in a very critical place whereby they know that they cannot make silly policies and go away with it. Now, look at what P2B said. You know, uh, uh, after hearing the news that the government, as a matter of fact, has uh, slashed uh, the cost of governance by about 60%. So, you know something, he said the 60% cut in federal office entourage. Now, he said something that was on the screen. He said they just announced, he said they just announced 60% cut in the size of the federal official entourage on travels is one positive step towards the reduction of cost of governance and a way of halting wastages. But this measure is just scratching the surface as it is limited in scope and can only lead to a very negligible saving. Apart from that, he said, we are yet to be told how much savings this will amount to. Why this modest step? Why this modest step? You understand that this is a very good step, a modest step. He said, why this modest step may be somewhat commendable? What is desirable should be, should be both a 60% reduction in federal office officials overseas trips as well as a 60% reduction in the size of delegations. He equally said that most importantly, what our current economic reality demands is a 60% reduction in total cost of governance at the federal level. This implies that, recently, that the recently passed federal budget needs to be revised to cut all wasteful and unnecessary items. This is the level of cost cutting and savings that can meaningfully impact the present state of the economy. This level of cost in the cost of governance should lead to substantial savings. You know, after commending them for at least taking a, a step in the right direction by trying to, by, you know, uh, reducing the cost of governance to a certain level, especially the number of entourages by 60%, you equally went for that to tell them that that is not enough, though it is commendable, but if that is not enough, that they should equally look at revising the 2024 uh, uh, budget. Remember, the budget has a lot of uh, uh, miscellaneous and useless uh, budget that shouldn't even be there. Imagine budgeting almost 20 billion for the renovation of the office of the vice president. Meanwhile, budgeting for only 5 billion naira for uh, education, uh, uh, student loan. So you see, if you see that the government is prioritizing just the renovation of one individual's house, over 200 million students or Nigerians uh, 
giving the plus five billion for student loan, which is part of human capital development. Imagine if they could have actually upgraded more for the student loan as a public charity for free. So this agreement for that to say that that they need to revise that particular uh, 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 budget that was actually you know uh, passed you know, into law and all that. Now, so this is part of the Social Security Review has actually commended and allegedly told them to make accounts of whatever proceedings and savings that will be made from uh, the, 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 the cost of governance that will be reduced. You know, one thing about government is saying something and being accountable. If you say that you've reduced the cost of co governance by 50%, what is the amount of money that you are saving? Several Nigerians, the amount of money you are saving. Because if you cost this particular number of entourages and governance, now we are, are we sure that the money is entering into the Nigerian treasury of course, or it's being looted by the presidency or some other people? And this is what people will be saying that the, the government should equally come out to tell Nigerians how much they are going to save from the cost of governance they are actually you know, reduced. Well, apart from this particular appraise that uh, that P P V gave to Tinubu, and equally controlling and equally even giving more advice, like I said, P P V is one advising them and giving them a click of the uh, things to do. Well, we they actually uh, donated uh, fifty thousand US dollars. This amount are about close to fifty million naira or more than fifty million naira to uh, the nursing school, uh, to the hospital, the, the health sector. He said, as you said, the school, driven by my commitment to the redevelopment of Nigeria using the most measurable standard yesterday, the Human Development Index HDI yesterday, I visited the very critical health facility, the Immaculate Heart Specialist Hospital in Mo, Anambra State. During my visit to the hospital, managed by the Immaculate Heart of Mary Sisters Congregation, I presented them with a check of 50,000 US dollars, which is approximately about 50 million naira or thereabouts, and 15 million respectively. He gave them a check of 15 of 50,000 US dollars and gave them 15 million naira, you know, uh, 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 immediately at uh, respectively. Then he said that the 50,000 dollars sum came from a kind hearted, very dear friend and brother, Prof. Philip Ozo, whose, Ozo, whose commitment to a better society and humanity is immeasurable. The 15 million naira came from my humble self as part of my commitment to that health facility. You could see people is not just only donating, it's equally than telling people to go to donate and help in the human capital development of Nigeria and of the nation. To tell you this is a leader that has character, competence and compassion. He's going about rallying people to his help in to helping the nation. This was the same way he submitted he, he donated money to plus you uh, people that were uh, killed and equally went to town and on all that why Bolami Tinubu has not even visited any of these various places. He said that we know a leader that will actually vote it. Well, like I said, if it's a man that will vote it, if it's a man that Nigeria voted, if the leader thinks to seven, he's going to come back and definitely nothing is going to 